I thank you guys. Yeah, I started writing for Ellen and then I had to grow this beard so they could tell us apart around the office. <laughs> Hope you guys are enjoying your food here tonight. I read that uh, people nowadays get more excited about eating than they do about having sex. Which that sounds crazy at first, but that is reflected in like the metaphors we use. You know, like the kissing is first base, fooling around is second and third base, and having sex is a home run. But two eggs, bacon, hash browns, and pancakes is a grand slam. <laughs> so uh, Dusty was talking about uh, Caitlyn Jenner. I think like, everybody's talking about how, uh, how beautiful Caitlyn Jenner looks. The only reason Caitlyn Jenner looks better than Bruce Jenner is because a woman's body always looks better than a man's body. Just across the board, a woman's body is more attractive than a man. If you don't believe that, just look at the sexy outfits that people wear. Like, the sexiest thing a woman can wear is lingerie, which is basically nothing at all. The sexiest thing a man can wear is a three-piece suit. Just layers and layers of material covering every inch of his horrible body. And then just to be safe, it's literally tied around his neck to make sure it doesn't fall off. I know it's not politically correct to joke about Caitlyn Jenner. Some issues I don't even know what the politically correct side to be on is. I was talking to a friend at work today about Stephen Hawking, you know, the astrophysicist in the wheelchair. And my friend goes, oh, I don't like him. He's a known anti-Semite. And I'd never heard this before, but I went home and looked it up. And it's true. A lot of Jewish people think some things Stephen Hawking has said are anti-Semitic. Which is confusing because now I don't know which disenfranchised group I'm supposed to side with. Like Jewish people or disabled people. Because don't get me wrong, it's horrible if Stephen Hawking is an anti-Semite, but it's great that he overcame incredible odds to become an anti-Semite. <laughs> so I had uh, a pro-life bumper sticker when I was driving. It said, babies get hiccups even before they're born. Which is true, and I do not support abortion. But I bet a visit to the clinic would scare those hiccups away. <laughs> I like that one because it's a pro-life joke that offends pro-life people. Just alienates everybody. No, I, I am pro-life, I'm pretty conservative and religious. I know a lot of people don't believe in God anymore. But I hear stories all the time that reaffirm my faith in God. Like I read about this bus driver who got mugged and they shot him, but his life was saved because the bullets were stopped by a Bible in his pocket. That is a miracle. That God blessed that man with ridiculous Bible-sized pockets. <laughs> I've done shows for more conservative audiences before. I once did a show in Anchorage, Alaska, which is a beautiful city, but they're like a lot more conservative than most big cities. Like most big cities, for instance, have gay neighborhoods. You know, here in LA, we have West Hollywood. In New York, they have an area called Chelsea. Chicago has Boys Town. San Francisco has San Francisco. <laughs> but Anchorage isn't like that. Like the gay area of Anchorage is just called Steve's House. And Steve is saving up to move to San Francisco. <laughs> I love traveling, but there are some trips that I would not take. Like, have you guys heard of the Mars One project? This is real. There's a private company that's planning to send people to Mars, and anyone's allowed to sign up for it. And their plan is they're going to narrow it down to five people, put them on a spaceship the size of a van, and send it to Mars. And because it's so far away, it's going to take them over a year of traveling through space before they get there. Then they're just going to land on the planet and stay there till they die. Like, they're never coming back. And they got 100,000 people sign up to do this. Which sounds crazy to me. Like, I couldn't stand a two-year trip to Mars. I can't even stand 30 seconds to Mars. <laughs> some of you like that, and some of you are wondering if that's the only punchline to that whole setup. <laughs> no, here's what worried me the most about that Mars mission, is that technology nowadays keeps advancing, like, really rapidly. So let's say they put you on that spaceship and send you into space, and then like two months into your journey, some guy on Earth invents a much faster way to get to Mars. Then you're just stuck on the slowest outdated spaceship in the universe while tourists fly back and forth past you. You can probably see them out the window and then by that point you've gone crazy and eaten two of your friends. And then by the time you get to Mars, it isn't even nice anymore. There's just people everywhere. They're like, oh, you should have been here earlier. It was beautiful. It's all polluted now. There were aliens, but we hunted them to extinction. Over there is a statue of Steve, the first man to ever set foot on Mars, after a harrowing two-hour journey. Y'all remember Steve? He was in the gay joke earlier. Now he's the first man on Mars. I also thought they said that because uh, people from all over the world were signing up for this Mars mission. There were Islamic leaders in the Middle East who heard about it. 
And they decided that leaving the earth forever is against the Islamic faith, so they're warning Muslims not to travel to Mars. Which ironically makes Mars the safest place you can travel right now. <laughs> Some people don't like that joke because it's not politically correct. It's just actually correct. <laughs> Johnny, there's, a, uh, there's an HIV clinic in my neighborhood. I think it's good like that the place that I hear always want to encourage people to get tested, but their latest promotion they're advertising in the window says, uh, come in for an HIV test and be entered to win a car. I feel like that's setting up an emotional roller coaster ride that nobody wants to go on. Like you're, uh, you're sitting at home a week later after the test and the phone rings. Hey, remember when you got an AIDS test and entered to win a car? Well, I have some good news and some bad news. Good news is you'll be able to drive to the doctor in style. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy the rest of the show.